I was doing digestive enzymes when I still had gut infections. So I know we put together a list here and I'm going to just go straight to the one that was a little lower down the list, which was, I think possibly one of the big smoking guns for a lot of people is, and I technically should have written in our notes, not testing. My note was not addressing infections and how not addressing your gut infections leads to digestive problems. Because if you're someone who's taking supplemental acids and enzymes, but you haven't tested or treated yourself for parasites or worms or H. pylori, bacterial overgrowth, fungal overgrowth, mold colonization, you're going to have very limited results with your enzymes and acids. So for me, I did that mistake. I just had high quality enzymes, I was taking those, but yet I still had diarrhea and other GI issues years ago because I had parasites and I hadn't tested or treated those. So that's to me, I think the big one because people will go to Whole Foods or wherever, hopefully they'll buy from us because it's professional quality, but they'll buy enzymes, take it, and then they still have GI issues and like, well, what the heck? I thought the enzymes were supposed to fix it. Yeah. And I see that. We see that all the time. Now, the question is, why is that happening? So Let's go over some of the bugs and some of the reasons why that may happen. So first off, H. pylori is a super common one. H. pylori is a bacteria that mm -hmm. resides primarily in the stomach. It can also go a little bit into the small intestine. And H. pylori is going to produce an enzyme called urease. And urease is going to take protein from, you know, which is the protein metabolite urea, and it's going to convert it into um, ammonia and CO2. And so on a positive H. pylori breath test, we're going to see elevations in CO2 after you swallow the urea from the breath test. And you're also gonna see a lot of ammonia. Now ammonia has got a pH of 11. And so that's more on the alkaline side. So your gut's normally a two or three on the pH. So that can start to alkalinize the gut and maybe throw off the digestive capacity because we need that nice, that nice low pH helps activate enzymes and acids. Well, it actually en act activates more of the enzymes. So that could be pepsin, various proteolytic enzymes, and it sets the table for the pancreas and the gallbladder to produce more enzymes, lipase, bile, when we get into the small intestine. So the acidity and the pH sets the deck, it sets the domino rally, so digestion works downstream. And so infections like H. pylori can cause problems. Infections like SIBO can also cause problems. SIBO is notorious for making it harder for that esophageal sphincter to close. And so if that esophageal sphincter can't close, there's prone, you have proneness to having that acid rise up and burn your esophagus, right? Those are all potential problems. Also, any stressor or infection, whether it's H. pylori, SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or it could even be something like a parasite, these infections are going to create sympathetic nervous system stress. And so the more your nervous system is over stress, that sympathetic nervous system, that fight or flight tone is being stimulated. What's going to happen is that fight or flight is going to take digestive enzymes and acids. It's going to reduce them. It's going to start shunting a lot of the digestive secretions and the blood flow away from the blood, away from the stomach and the core and to the hands and the feet to run, fight and flee. Cause our body is trying to move blood and move resources to the areas that are most metabolically high in expenditure. And in a, in a fight or flight circumstance, that's going to be the extremities fighting, fleeing, running. And our body is prehistorically driven that way because you don't want to be hungry when you're running. You don't want to think about digestion. You want to be focused on getting away or fighting. And that blood has to carry oxygen so these muscles can work. And so that blood moves away from the intestines. And that's part of the reason why these infections can really throw off your body. They can really increase that sympathetic nervous system and take away from that vagal tone, vagus nerve, parasympathetic nervous system response. Yeah, I can totally relate.